everybody. Welcome to the Bourbon Battalion. This is Bobby here. Looking forward to uh, spending a Wednesday Wednesday with you. So what we're going to look at today is some stuff that you might have on your bar that's a little bit lackluster. You don't really care for. You've contemplated maybe even drain pouring it. Stop what you're doing. Impress your friends with your junk on your bar by knowing what to do with it to make it more impressive. So we're going to take some stuff that I have on the bar. I was looking down there and I was like, what do I have here that I can do something with? And uh, so I'll give you the lineup, right? So the lineup tonight is uh, we're going to start with Nickel 12. I'm not saying that I don't drink Nickel 12. I have no problem with it. It's not wowing. It's, you know, it's on the bar because it's like $17. I think it's maybe 19, somewhere around there. Um, the other guy on the bar, Cleveland Underground, rye finished with black cherry wood. Uh, I would never drink this straight. It was, it was gifted to me by the gunny because the gunny said, you should have this. That just tells me the gunny didn't want it. Item number three, Ohio. A La Rosco uh, whis weeded whiskey, heavy, strong wheat, um, an interesting taste. Uh, don't think it's one that I really care for on its own. Um, I can kind of do it with a cigar, but it's it's so much wheat. Uh, I think you're looking at 86. I think it's 86 wheat, uh, eight and eight rye marley, barley. And finally, Jim Beam Reveal Batch. It has nothing to do with it being bad. It's just I can I can find it for like $9.99 or 10 bucks. And so I was looking at this and thinking we need to go through and look at how we can blend some stuff we have on our bar. Now, am I a master blender? I'm not. I'm just a guy that knows what I like. But I, I typically have a pretty good knack of being able to blend to someone's taste and thinking about what I might have that would go with it, right? So I typically always am blending for cigars and stuff like that. That's not always the case, though. There's plenty of times that I've blended uh, for someone's profile or just someone's taste. So the first thing, special guest in the house, the gunny is here. Hurrah. You're gonna hear you're gonna hear Gunny, and if you see me over here looking, we're talking back and forth. The Gunny's making a vocal presence, so um, it's always fun when we get together. And uh, we're gonna start pouring. So we're gonna start with Dickel, Dickel Twelve. We're gonna pour up Dickel Twelve. Figure out what we like about it and what we don't like about it, and what we can change it to. What do we need to add? Right. So. And this could be any of your pores, right? And if you have any consider, if you have anything that you consider a, hey, what's up, Richie Z? If you consider anything that maybe is either a drain pour or something that you just don't find that you're really all that crazy about, well, throw in the chat and let me know. And, uh, you know, maybe we'll discuss a little bit. So I'm going to look at the dickel, you know, what you get with your basic dickel. This is dickel 12. You know, you're going to get that Tennessee style maple. Hey, Jenny. You get that smooth, but medicinally. There's this weird, like, uh, I hate to use something anybody else done, but like, you know, this maybe some kind of chewable candy medicine. It's not bad, but. It, it's lacking a bunch of stuff for me. It certainly brings the, the syrup. I think the 12 year really brings some syrup to the table. Yeah, it, it, you have you have tech, you have some syrupy texture. But as far as the flavor of the syrup, it's definitely a light syrup. It's a light syrup. You're not like talking like a really dark, thick. It's more like a like a sugar free syrup or something like that. Um, yes, I know. I tried not to say it, Richie. Because I've heard it so many times, I just didn't want to go through and say the same thing. But yes, it does. It absolutely does taste like chewed up Flintstone chewables. No doubt about it. It has that weird chalky medicinal to it. 
So for me, I want to make this a cigar blend. This is going to end up being a cigar blend for me. And I'm not only going to blend it to my preference, I'm going to blend it to the Gunny's preference and figure out through the through this journey of what did it change to. Yeah, I don't I don't mind it at all. Trust me, I, I drink Dickel 12. It's it's a great 12 year that doesn't cost it's under $20. It's a great sipper. Yeah, it's a great sipper. You can sip this all day long. But what's something you can add to it that, you know, Jim Beam repeal batch? I mean, like for example, you know, when you're sitting there thinking about certain things, this has a light syrupy texture, a little bit of that syrupy taste, but I don't have a big coated mouthfeel. I'm not feeling this like long finish. It's rather a short finish and goes and just dissipates so quick. So to me, let me bring it back up a smidge so that we have a, a, a certain thing that we can add to it. So we're going to take our dickel and put it back to where it was. Make our base. This is our base. So our base is our dickel 12. So when we look at this, what are we what are we going to do? So we need to give it a mouthfeel. A mouthfeel for me is a, a heavy coating with a good finish and stuff like that. So with this being our basic Tennessee style, nothing gives you a oilier mouthfeel than beam. Beam always brings the nuts, brings the mouthfeel that comes with that big oily texture. So we're going to throw a splash. So we're going to try to keep it um, nickel two and move our way through, right? So we're going to add some beam, some beam reveal batch. And I don't really measure it per se. I just kind of splash it into what I think it should be. And then, you know, you just swirl it around, marry it. Um, hopefully, and Richie and Jenny, you both can tell me for sure, the quality should be better. New computer. Finally, thank the Lord. So at least it looks better to me. So... I'm going to marry this around. Perfect, Jenny. Thanks. So, yeah, you know what? It, it gave the dickel some character. Um, I'm getting a more of a finish uh, that I get a heavier coating. Seemed like it smoothed it out so it did it did for me it smoothed it out so right and that's weird you know because you're talking about smoothing out dickel 12. um it's not medicinally now i don't feel that chewy flint to stone vitamin medicine-y chewable stuff somewhere between flint stones and tums and it's like it almost became a little more void yeah it added an element but i lost some other elements yeah so I don't feel like this tastes at all what I like, right? I like, I like spice. I want some rye. I need, I need the rye. I need that spicy mouth note and all that stuff. So what we're going to do is we're going to move and add some Ohio to it, right? The Ohio is a Oloroso weeded whiskey that has a predominant amount of wheat, but it does have some added rye to it. But it comes with so much wheat that it has this weird, it doesn't taste weedy, if that makes any sense at all. <laughs> when you look at an 84% wheat, it's like so weedy. You're just like, what? And I don't know if it's because it's an eight and eight rye and mar uh, barley afterwards, but something about it is, uh... all right, thanks, Richie. And uh, so we're going to add some Oroo. Now, the, where I think we're going to get this weird tartness is that it's uh, finished in sherry. So being finished in sherry cask, if you're familiar with sherry, what you end up finding with the sherry is, you know, it's, it's, it's slightly tart when you go through the casking. Or at least it is to me. So right now we're on Dickel. As Dickel 12 is our main We've added beam 
And now we've added OIO. So I'm doing one part. So everything, whoa, that's good. That's, that's pretty damn good. So Richie, what I have now is I'm doing two parts Dickel, one part beam, one part OIO. And that's the Oloroso weeded whiskey that's finished in sherry. And it just made this really, really good. It's got crazy long legs. I'm telling you what, it's viscosity. oily, the viscosity on the, the, the gunny is right. The, it got oily, it got big mouth feels. You pulled some, there's some concoction between the um, Orozco finish with the sherry, with the high wheat mixed with me. Uh, right now, this is pretty damn good. The feature it added was quality. It just tastes like oh, something quality. This is it. This right here is a pretty good drinker. So let's do. So what we have now, let's do some notes on it. You know, it, it it's it's definitely got to the point that it's a little fruit forward. I don't get the bite. It yeah, bitey. It's no, no. sharp. It doesn't make my tongue tingle. There's just enough, there's just enough rye and barley in there to give you some mouthfeels. It's not predominant. You're not sitting there on a high rye, but there's enough in there that's like, hey, this is all right. And, uh, but that sweet, that little bit of sweetness from that sherry has, has mixed and went up some. What's up, Brooke? And, uh, so it's got... It's gotten really, really good. So what we're going to do is, um, it, you, absolutely, Richie. The OIO added nice layers that blended somewhere. Hey, James. So what we're doing tonight is a Wednesday blends day. Uh, we started with Dickel 12 as our base. Um, we added a one part. Jim Beam repeal batch, and we just added the OIO uh, Olorosco wheat finish, finished double finished and sherry, um, and it just made this pop instantly. It went from a very lackluster Tennessee twelve year to we lost some of the stuff that you would get with the. Uh, the dickel to the beam, but we added some finish. The oily texture gave us finish. And then the double casking OIO that was a heavy weeder, we're talking 86% wheat, but it's also an eight and eight after that of rye and barley. Mix that in and it went from a, a classic Tennessee. Now it's went to a good oily finish. Now it just went up to a quality drink. And uh, and James, I know you don't know it, but the voice that I'm talking to over here is the gunny. So, so if you think the the mouth feel comes from some tingly kind of element that kind of makes your mouth tingle in your head, and sometimes it's high proof, sometimes it's high rise, sometimes it's just something else you can't really put your thumb on, but it just makes it tingle. We got everything here that I like. I think we're missing some tingle. Yeah. We lost a little bit of tingle. Yeah. And although I have certain things, what's up, Daniel? Certain things that I always think of when someone tells me that it's missing this, this tingle, this little bite to it, um, I'm instantly drawn to move away from the last element I was going to use because the last element may still be the last element, but I'm going to add an element. Because I have to. I must add an element. You don't understand. When I get to blending, it becomes a little bit OCD. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, I know exactly what this is missing. Which is going to give it that. And would be right at that point, it's going to be a really good drinker. Great drinker. But my ultimate finish is to make a really, really good. What's up, Jason C.? 
So uh, we're doing it. We're doing a blend tonight. And uh, so what we did, we started with George Dickel 12. And we worked our way to adding Jim Beam repeal batch. We just added OIO, uh, Olorosco wheat whiskey with the sherry finish. And we've come up with a pretty good drink. The only thing that it's missing, I mean, because the, the sweetness came up, the finish came with the beam, the sweet brought it up with the uh, Oloroso wheat finish. And then now we're looking at the gunny is here making a vocal appearance. And the one thing that's missing is a little bit of that tingly mouthfeels, right? And as strange as it sounds, there's always one thing that instantly comes to my head when someone says, you need to add this and give a little bit of a tingly mouthfeels. And it's always the same thing. So I need to get these all back on point. So I need to add one part of this because we're down one part. So what we're doing now is we're going back. So Dickel 12, we're bringing it back up to where we what we've lost. And yeah, you know, you can do even pours and like that stuff. I, you know what? I just mess around with it. I just mess around with it. So um, we have to add a splash of beam. And we're doing a Jim Beam repeal batch. Uh, mostly because not that this would ever be a mouth pour or a drain pour. It's just you know, like $9.99. And it is great for using stuff like that, right? So we have to add a splash of the OIO. This is the Oloroso wheat uh, whiskey. 86% wheat, 8 and 8, rye and barley. So we're going to throw a splash of that in there. We're going to marry it up a little bit. And the one thing that the gunny just said that is missing, it's missing some mouthfeels, right? So instantly, and I know that I'm going to have some negative feedback on this, but hey, it is what it is. Because I know for a fact, it always does it. So if you ever have a drink that needs some mouthfeels that you would never believe gives mouthfeel, Weller Special Reserve. So we're going to throw a splash of Weller Special Reserve in here. And you're like, how does adding a weeder do it? It does. I promise. So cracking a Weller Special Reserve to make my uh, my blend. Because we're trying to make, we're trying to use a little bit of something to make the rest of our stuff, shit, whatever you want to call it, that is either somewhere along the lines of a drain pour or just it's so lackluster or it's, I don't know. I just I want to do something else with it. So we're going to marry it up a little bit. And uh, and it may seem strange, but, you know, it's just one of those things where. Man, that's gotten really that's gotten great on the nose. Holy smokes. In the beginning, I mean, Dickel 12, let's face it. You know, I mean, there's not much on the nose. And this this has been like a really crazy thing. Right. So right now. If I didn't know any better, what's up, Cheech? If I didn't know any better, I would think you poured something high proof in it. Yeah, it, it acts like you just proofed it, and it's weird. I can't explain why. And if uh, Jason or somebody mm -hmm. can, I can't explain why Weller Special Reserve gives this weird mouthfeels proofing when you add it, but it does. But we know it's not a high proof. Yeah, we know it's not a high proof. It's Weller Special Reserve. Uh, the nose has gotten very cherry. Uh, some classic bourbon notes, some maple, definitely some maple in there. It's gotten tingly, and I feel, I feel like the effervescent or something, the vapors going through my sinuses. I'm telling you right now, I could, I could make this for you and have you guys drink it, and you think that's some good shit, <laughs> and it is, it is. So, as it stands right now, you could easily go through and drink this this is a great drinker you know hopefully you know um i know i talked to jenny and richie when they were the only ones on earlier i got my new i got my, all of my parts of my new setup i don't have everything done behind me this weekend i'm going to be redoing the wall redoing a bunch of the bar stuff i got my new computer thank the lord 
<laughs> um, yeah, you want to, there's a lot of people in here that are great, James. The community is always fantastic. So, but yeah, I think the thing that you want to go through and do is just understand that when you have something like that, you don't have to be a person that spends a lot of time blending. What you do is just have to be confident in what you like. So look at your palette and say, hey, listen. Yeah, it's pretty close. That's pretty close. So uh, Rich is going through and doing a little bit of the same thing. He did a Dickel 12 with uh, OGD bonded and Noble Oak Sherry finish. So Richie, what are you thinking so far? What do you, what do you find in there? This right here where I'm at right now is pretty good, but I'm going to add one other thing to it because this right here is at a point that I would, I could take a decanter, mix it and put it on the bar and I'd serve it. Label it your cigar blend. Yeah. I, I would label it, you know, as a, a battalion, battalion mess something like that it's a battalion mess right but the one thing that is for me and i can't explain why when i think of cigar blends i always think of the wine casking right and that's where a lot of those really good blends come from they come from that deep wine casking and in that there's big rich most of the time some of your best cigar blends come from ports and if you're a wine person you know port is a dessert wine it is straight up thick um, Robotussin feeling, not tasting, feeling. It's really thick. It coats the throat. It does some amazing stuff. But when you think of that cigar blend, what I need to do is I need to bring it up to the point that the wrapper is going to have some kind of weird port type of feel to it. So there's a couple of different things. One of the things that instantly comes to mind is the Woodenville port. However, Woodenville port is so good and I enjoy it so much, there's no way that I'm just throwing that in there. However, I have Cleveland rye whiskey finished with black cherry wood. What is the major ingredient we're probably missing out of the whole thing? Rye and a big fruit finish. And if you're looking at a cigar blend, we're going to throw a splash of this in there. So I know, right? It's very good, right? Instead of taking it away, it's going to add, it should add. This right here is going to make it thick, coat feels. Uh, you're going to be like, like that's going to pair with the Gunny's palate. The Gunny is going to think he needs to go out at the deck, light a fire, and throw down a freaking Maduro. Jason, this is absolutely without a doubt in your wheelhouse for a Maduro blend. Now there's a lot of different Maduro blends I did, but this one was purely over just regular stuff that was laying down there too. Now, yeah, I don't usually throw well, actually I do. I throw lower special reserve in here a lot. So, and the gunny can, I said, I, you know, I apologize if you're not in Ohio, so Weller Special Reserve. But, but say you take the label off. You say, this isn't Weller Special Reserve. This is the leader that brings these qualities. That's why it's important to get in touch with your own personal palate. What's it missing? What yeah. brings that? Yeah. Regardless of the label. Oh, did you smell that? Yeah. Did you smell that? Yeah. Holy yeah. crap. Jason, I'm telling you right now, this just went. It's got a mouthfeel for my nose. Yeah, yeah. If you did, I'm sure you heard that. That's funny shit. That's, that was funny. Not every day you get mouthfeel through your nose, <laughs> but the gunny just did. Yeah, throw an at a, a little bit, of, a splash of rye just to give the mouthfeel. Then afterwards, find a port finish. A minor case would be more. Yeah. Yeah, you could do minor it's, case, it's, it's a minor case, Angel's Envy, uh, any port finish. You know, this ain't a port finish, but it's really close tasting. Uh, but do your rye first, right? Because the thing the rye is going to bring to it, it's going to bring up a little bit of that um, mouthfeel stuff. But, man, I'm telling you what. It certainly doesn't disappoint the nose. On the nose, this is 
brown sugar, like heavy brown, like mo almost like melted brown sugar, like all day poor person pancake syrup, right? Maybe with like if you took your butter in your skillet and you had a nice slab of real butter and you threw in some brown sugar and made it this really weird but awesome pancake syrup because hey you just can't afford a high expensive maple just some of this candy that was cherry jellies covered in black chocolate yeah you know what yeah i'm telling you what there's like crazy notes going on here um it is absolutely amazing That's a cigar blend. That's a cigar blend. That's a cigar blend. Oh my god! Missing. I thought you was missing a punch Maduro. <laughs> punch Maduro. Yeah. Oh man. Yeah, that is. That's ridiculous. That is really good. It is really good. So if you're a Maduro smoker, an oily wrapper smoker, this this right here might be your blend, right? So everybody on here. So Ben, how you doing, Ben? Glad you jumped on. Jason Cheech, Richie, Jenny's on here. So, man, I appreciate you guys. You know, it's it's so much fun doing this, you know, and it's only going to get better. I'm not really all that worried about how much uh, production do. I will go through and get a lot of things changed just because um, I, I want to. Uh, Roop, glad you're on. Uh, but for me, it's more about I enjoy not only what you like, but why you like it. And I, I believe that we as if you're involved in the tubes, whether you're an official steward or not, you're a steward. Right. And people are looking to you and trying to figure out what do I do? What do I do with some of this stuff? I, I mean, I like this and it's really good, but I don't know why I like it. And then you're like. It's our job to explain, well, why why would you like us? Even if you went through Jack Daniels single barrel barrel proof rye. Well, that'll bring up the rye and the proof. If we can keep it on the shelf. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be really. So you added a splash of right after taste that. Make sure you marry it really good because that's going to proof it up a little bit. But it should add the mouthfeels for sure. And uh, the mouthfeel is going to come from the rye. It ain't so much the barrel proof. Barrel proof is going to bring it up, but there's a lot of other stuff in here that's going to keep it mid range. So it's not going to really go through and kill it too much. We haven't had anything over 90 proof, have we? The OIO. The most, the highest proof we've had is the OIO. It's 102. It's 102? Yeah, 102. So our overall proof bill has been like somewhere between 86 and 102. Yeah. And it pays much more than that. Yeah, I mean, it came up. It came up because you're going to do that, right? Hey, Chief, that's a good drink. He's drinking Chattanooga, Chattanooga Rye 99. Nice. Orange zest. Oh, what did I just do? Oh, orange zest and citrus. Dude. I'm pretty sure that was exactly the notes I threw. Hey, Roop, I think I was the notes I threw out the other day on the, uh, I did a review on the Bell Mead 108.3. I'm pretty sure those were the notes I threw out on it. Uh, me and the gunny went through, every time I go through and do a recon report, you know, me and the gunny go through and do it first. And uh, we want to get our mouth feels. Oh. So we drank it all with a cigar. <laughs> Jason's asking, how did the gunny like the four gate rye? It, well, it's gone. <laughs> it's gone. I will tell you something, Jason, that you'll be like, no way, no way. So we were sitting there and uh, the one that he was really eager for was the uh, 17 year wild turkey bottled bond. And uh, we were sitting there and we were sipping it. And I was like, you know, I know what this tastes like. And I went in the house and I blended what I thought tasted identical to the wild turkey 17 year bottle and bond. And I took it back out and said, okay, now tell me the difference, which one's which. 
I was pretty darn close. I'm just saying, I'm pretty darn the close. Was struggling. The, the gunny was struggling. Now, the gunny might have been struggling <laughs> mostly because, okay, we had, we had been sampling some stuff. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure at one point in time, he might have, like, you know, I don't know, told a particular person that I'm married to that she has a nice ass. And she does. Hey, well, could well, I was dragging on a Pravada. Yeah, you know what? Well, we were sitting there smoking a Pravada cigar. <laughs> so take care, Ben. And uh, but yeah, you know, it was it was a good time. But you know that I can't thank you enough. We've had a great time tasting the samples. Um, I'll get with you on this blend. Um, I'm gonna make a couple blends, and then I have some really good cigar blends anyway. Um, I know that. Although we're bourbon whiskey guys, most of us are all everything we like people, right? So I, I definitely was a whiskey, a, a wine guy for years. Um, there's a really good winery that I'm that I like going to that makes a great uh, cigar blend wine. So I'll have to reach out to them and get it, and I'll send it to you, Jason, because I think you'll really enjoy it. So, but this right here, this blend right now. Richie Z, where are you at? How's that tasting? So Richie Z is kind of following along the best he can. Wow. Yeah, and make sure, you know, I did this beforehand because at 9 o'clock, you need to jump over to Jason. Jason's got a great lineup tonight that I'm looking forward to because some of, some of them I have, some of them I don't, and I want to see what he has to say about them. Um, I tend to line up pretty close and uh tasting everything when i go through on my people you know and i do a really good evaluation of whoever who i watch and i watch not as much as richie z because let's say it, let's face it right now there's no bigger tuber supporter out there in the world than richie z at least that i see so i appreciate you i know a lot of people do but the people that line up with me jason does uh jason c he has a a, a taste profile that lines up a little bit around where I'm at pretty close. Uh, Perry Ritter out of this, my bourbon podcast, he does. Um, if I line up with Jason C, I got to line up with Scott. <laughs> and so, um, and uh, so, you know, you want to look and watch everybody and learn because everybody has something they're bringing that they're good at. Uh, everybody has unique qualities and unique things. And, uh, you know, if you, if, you know, if you know somebody that, you know, wants to learn more, um, my thing, oh yeah, it's an excellent pour. Yeah. When you got to where we got to, that's, that's an excellent pour. You know, you could throw that stuff in a decanter all day long. But if you happen to want to make a cigar blend, you want to throw a splash of port in there, throw one part port in there somewhere. <clears throat> Absolutely. Richie Z, Cheech is everywhere. Now, I'll be honest with you, Cheech. You're right there with him. I see you a lot. But uh, I can wake up at almost any given point in my old age, and I can find Richie Z. <laughs> it's like, although, although, did I hope you guys, oh, man, I hope so. Did any of you guys get on the unintentional, intentional, not intentional live feed from the wrench. That was probably the funnest, funniest accidental live feed I've ever seen. It was so, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. He had more followers and likes than I do on a real feed. Uh, Cheech, you're a good dude too, man. So, oh, you know what? Amy, Amy is right there. Amy is right there too. Amy Room, she's she's there too. I try to get you know what if I could just quit my day job. I, let me tell you, I could drink every show. I would just you know not remember I did it. So 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 what do you think of that? It's nice to have some subpar stuff on your bar to play with. So you when know, you get a brain pour, you're not disappointed anymore. You're like. Hey, wait a minute. I'm excited about getting one of those drain ports so I can see what I can do with it. Yeah. So hopefully the one thing you had out of this and uh, 
is understanding that you know you have stuff that is lackluster not a something you want and you're thinking about bitching it mm -hmm. you might find that you might have like a hidden gem in your decanter and everybody that comes and has this company like that's the best shit i ever had you're a genius <laughs> and you're like why yes i am <laughs> and it's not about the label no it's about the experience yeah what was the experience that brought to the table right in in the dialogue right you brought the dialogue right. the communications the friendship the laughs you know and, and you know there there's certain things that are, are right about it right it's it's not what you're drinking, it's who you're drinking with, right? You know, and I think Jason has a really good slogan with his. Mm -hmm. And it's not about the whiskey, it's about the people you drink it with. Mm -hmm. And the dialogue and the funniness that goes along with it. You know, for me, it's more about, you know, it's uh, choosing to serve as a sacred choice. And for me, choosing to serve, whether, you know, when, when you're looking at first responders, whether they be police, EMT, whatever, uh, military, People that have signed on the dotted line to take the effort to serve others, um, but at the same time, it's a it's it's a sacred choice to be chose to be served at a at my bar or at Jason's bar or any of those bars, right? So it's always one of those things. Exactly, uh, Gunny said that earlier. It's like having chocolate covered. Would you cherry, say cherry chocolate, chocolate covered, covered cherries? Chocolate covered cherries. He just got in there. He said, I got a ton of baking chocolate on this blend. That's awesome. And that's what you're thinking of. Now, Richie, was that after you added the port or before? So, hey, I appreciate it. You know, I mean, it's very rare that you go on any show and you have a high percentage of likes. So I appreciate that. Um, I have a really high percentage of likes on this. Uh, like I said, a lot of the graphics behind me is going to change. Um, the the weird mirror that I'm always trying to cover up because it shows like my ceiling and all that kind of crap has got to go. Even though I made it when I was like a young kid, my wife's like, "Oh, but you made that," and I was like, "Yeah, I don't care." And so I got all my new gear. I got all my new logos. I got all my new barrel heads. I got everything done for the bar. Now I just got to put it all together. <clears throat> The good news is the blend is amazing. Bad news is you probably won't get it again. Well, I, I will because I have the lineup. <laughs> <laughs> I know exactly what to make. So I said, I took a sip, then I refilled it, and I took a sip and refilled it. Okay, I'm going to throw you guys a solid because there's, hey, you know what? We're up to 10. So I'm going to throw a straight solid at you. If you're anything, it, listen, if you did not get on the wild turkey, 17 year bottle and bond when it was out you're not going to find it msrp or even close to it however i blended it and it was pretty close to what you might expect right very close it was, it, it was very close it was very very close so i can tell you exactly what i did i did two parts um bell mead reserve 108.3 Whiskey Mountains. It's a Adriana. You're the best. I'm so glad you got a chance to jump in here. We made an unbelievable blend. And you can ask Richie. We made a great blend of a bunch of really subpar stuff. So now you got a trick a lot of people waiting to see what this blend What's up, Whiskey is. Encore? Oh. Yeah, so if you know Cheech, he's got a new channel called The Whiskey Encore. Go find him, sub him. He's one of the best supporters out there. And uh, yeah, Wednesday Wednesday is a new thing, and it's going to be, it's it's right in there with Wednesday Wednesday on the tube, and Fire Friday on Instagram. So, and uh, Adriana knows about both of them. We we talked a lot of it. Uh, Fire Friday. If you don't know, I live by the fire pit. If it's not, well, actually, I've been in there in the rain, the snow. <laughs> There's very few things that will stop me other than something that, that stops. Cover the snow. The, the, it has to put out the fire for me to stop. So that's okay. Adriana, if you have a question about what we did right now, all you have to do is hit me up. You know how to get me. Just DM me. 
I'll send you what we did and the stages we did and, and what it became. But this is delicious. So getting back to cliffhanger, right? Mm -hmm. The cliffhanger was how do you blend a wild turkey bottle and bond 17 year? It's two parts Bell Mead Reserve 108.3 mixed with one port Woodenville port finish and one port Weller Special Preserve. If you do that, it is really, 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 really close. I think that if I put them and mixed them around and gave it to you as a blind, I don't know which one you'd pick. I don't know which one you'd pick as being better. Mm. They're very similar, though. The nose is straight on. Uh, the taste profile is, like, really close. And so I think it's one of those things that you look at, right? Of course, give it a whirl. Worth giving it a shot. The, the worst thing you're going to do is make a really good drink and enjoy it. Enjoy. If you're a cigar person, have a cigar with that, please. You socialize with your friends to figure out who's got Woodenville Port finish. <laughs> yeah. So Woodenville Port. So I will I will give a sneak peek, right? Because we don't have very many people, right? So I have a really exciting upcoming recon report, right? So my recon reports are kind of like someone might do an uncorking or an unveiling or something like that. So I've got friends in low places. I've got friends in eh, average places and I've got friends in high places. And one of my friends that is kind of in like all those, depending on how much he's been drinking, <laughs> hooked me up with, and this will be something I do down the road, A Woodenville single barrel cask. So this was a uh, a private select store pick of Woodenville of uh, Woodenville's cast strength. So you might say, Battalion, what the f? Why is that a big deal? It's freaking Woodenville. Well, contraire, mon frere. So let's talk about why that might be something we're checking out. Although I have a particular set of skills, let's face it. Oh yeah, I will, <laughs> Richie, I will too. Um, why am I gonna do it? Well, if you happen to catch a few shows ago, a particular somebody went through and did a cast strength blind flight. Who came out number one? Was it the Elijah Craig Barrel Proof? No, it came out number two. Wild Turkey Rare Breed? No, it like way down. So you have this like, there was like some big boys Happy hitters. that got smacked. Number one cast strength review and a blind Woodenville cask. Fred Menick. His Woodenville cask beat the rest. So let's see what a Woodenville cask single barrel does. So at, least, so at least worth exploring. So I'm going to go through and put my Woodenville cask blind versus my Elijah Craig A121. And see, one, can I pick them? And two, which one's better? Just because I pick one doesn't mean I think it's better. I'm just going to tell you what I think it is. But which I'll tell you which one I think is better. I can tell you right now, Adriana, you know, I, ha I have points will travel. We're going to do a, a battalion reconnaissance mountain mission. You can bet on that. After we hike some crazy, like straight up elevation stuff. But yeah, so a couple things going up and down the road. Yeah, that, that's going to happen. I can tell you that right now. Have hiking gear, have points, will travel, will bring bourbon. <laughs> so, but yeah, so right now, so Richie Z said he's going to make this again so that we can watch Jason do his stuff. Yeah, well, okay, so, yeah, all right, I will too. 
This is really good. I hope you rewatch this and go through and spend some time putting this together. Look at your bar. Listen, this is really simple, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not a master blender. You know, um, Gunny, you've been doing this for a long time. Mm -hmm. I got into this because of you. Uh, one, you're my brother. And two, you know shit. One of the things that's really, really good is looking at things on your bar. And the Cleveland Underground. Forget the label. Yeah, Forget the label. Yeah, the Cleveland Underground Cleveland. and the OIO are both things that you're like, hey, I don't really care for. And you gave them to me. And uh, so I'm like, okay, well, how can I not, what can I do with that? Because, you know, we all have different skill sets, right? And in that, we learn from each other. I would not be doing you any due diligence if I did not tell you, hey, trust your palate and think of what you like. Look at the stuff you have that you don't really care for. You might have a concoction of things that blend together. What's it missing? What you brings know, that to the table? No way in the world. I can tell you for a fact, I did not at all think the OIO wheat, Sherry, was going to put that much sweet to it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even know where that came from. Mm -hmm. If you taste OIO Oloroso wheat whiskey straight up, it is not sweet. Even though it's finished, it's not sweet. It's actually kind of bitter to me. But in this concoction, it did some really amazing stuff. And that's the thing, right? You might have some stuff that sounds that doesn't really taste great as you're having it. That doesn't mean it won't bring something different. Now, listen, you might blend something. It turns out straight garbage. How do you turn that garbage into, you know, they say one man's garbage is another man's treasure, right? Take your garbage and make it a treasure. Throw it in a canner, put it in there as your spe special blend and let people be like, oh, what is that? And you're like, ancient Chinese secret. <laughs> I can't tell you. you know? And so you go through and it's, it's really good. This is really good. Jason, I hope you do this and let me know. Um, if not, I will just make it and drive down to your house and knock under your door until you do because the dog will go crazy. Well, it's kind of like if you have an old blowhorn or a uh, rhetoric 22, you know, it tastes old. It tastes that. It's got that age to it. What flavor profile brings that age for you? And uh, even though you may add something that's not necessarily old, but you might capture that extra finished uh, bourbon brings that element, that note to the mix. You can make it taste old with stuff that ain't necessarily old. I'm telling you on the nose, this, this smells right now, right? You know, and if you know me, I'm always about letting it sit, getting the back blast, doing a second mm -hmm. pour. And listen, do second pours. Do a second pour. You might be sitting on something that you didn't really care for at all. Talk, kill some time, whatever, and pour it again. And then go back to it, and you're going to be like, what just happened? Well, it's not because – it didn't get good because I'm, I'm drunk. I've had a like 1.5 ounces. You know, I haven't even had like a technical shot at a good bar. And I, my overall drinking experience doesn't usually come close to a really good bar person that I'm really good friends with that hooks me up on a shot. They'll be like, oh, yeah, we'll give you a shot. And you're like, oh, yeah, that's like a 3.5% uh, 3.5 pour. Yeah. Very rarely do I ever taste at a high volume, mm -hmm. you know, the way most of us do. Do yourself to do diligence. Go for a second pour. If you watch my stuff, I always do a certain thing. You know, you go through, you do a full frontal assault, you go into it, you do the eyes, the nose, the palate, do all that stuff. And before you finish that, set it aside. Leave that little bit 
sitting aside so it's breathing fast. It's going to breathe real fast because there's not much to it, so it's evaporating fast. Let it go. Pour yourself again. Go through it again. And be like, whoa, what the hell? Why did that change? And then stop what you're doing. Go to the back blast. You're like, that's what it's going to be if I put on my decanter. <laughs> go to your Goodwill and get decanters, for God's sakes. And everything you put in a decanter, just put the bottle by it, the label, do whatever you can to remember what it is. And uh, there's nothing better than having decanted stuff on your bar. If you watched my uh, special with a uh, drinking bar, yes, please. I have decanters. I was uh, talking. So next Monday, the 8th, and uh, hopefully, if everything works out right, I'm going to talk to Matt and the Whiskey Crusaders. I know that I am on the Whiskey Crusaders at 10 o'clock Eastern Standard Time, uh, March 8th. They're actually tasting through. I don't know if it'll be both, all three of them or if it'll just be Matt. They're tasting through some blends that I sent them as a uh, blind tasting. Um, a couple people have done it. They were rather surprised. <laughs> um, I know that Jason has them. Uh, hopefully he can jump on. It works out that he can jump on because he'll be doing the same blind they're doing and we'll both be on there. And at the same time, you know, um, I have, I think it's the that Friday of next week, there's a, uh, uh, a person over in the UK, uh, the, whis the Sarcastic Whiskey Winch on Instagram. I paired up with her and we're going to look at a introduction to Bourbon to scotch and scotch to bourbon. How do you hit the middle road if you want to go either way? So if you're advancing your palate, you want to advance your palate across spectrum, right? I want to know what mild whiskey, mild bourbon, all that stuff. You also want to know, hey, well, scotch, you know, hey, I don't have a lot of knowledge of scotch. Have I had it? Yes. Do I like it? Yeah, I do. If I want a scotch bender and I, I didn't start with bourbon, I'm good with it. So, and, uh, oh. Roop, I go down all the time to the Appalachian Mountains and I hike and fly fish, um, the back country of West Virginia. And that is some beautiful hiking and fly fishing and all that stuff. So, you know, but that's the thing, right? You have to go through, find your palate, find those things and work it out. It's not about chasing the Joneses. It's harder than that. It's about chasing yourself. I'm really sad that's gone. I was just getting ready to say, hey, can you mix that again? I can. <laughs> I'll mix it again. That shit's really good. May the force be with so, the second, second pour, because it's so good, we're pouring it again. So I'm going to show you what I did. For a recap, and I know Adriana's still on here, right? This is what we did. Base. The base. <laughs> uh, did I not? Oh, you know what? Oh, you know what? You're right. Thanks, Rich. I will actually do it with a few people today. So. Uh, I don't. I don't see Jason right now, but I will. Thanks. Good looking out, Rich. So also, I think at the very beginning of the feed, I put my PayPal me at um, links there. So I got a lot of new stuff. I've spent a lot of time in here. Roop, you know, I mean, I, you know, I'm just really comfortable at doing my pours, right? I'm just really comfortable at doing it. And uh, so I tried to do. Eye. You got a calibrated eye. Yeah. You know, I, I, you know what? At some point in time, maybe I'll take the time. You, you, okay, Roop, let's be real. You know why I don't ever use a jigger? Because I spill that shit everywhere. Richie Z, I'm telling you, I know it's good because we're going through and doing it. We're recreating it again, right? So I'm going to do a two parts 
Dickel. Right? And it's not hard to figure. If you was to sit here and look at what I just poured, you'd be like, how do you pour that evenly? But I don't, I don't know. I have skills. But if you pour into a Glen Karen often enough, which I assume most people do, you know, where does that pour take a Glen Karen? Yeah. Yeah. So now we're going to add in from our Dickel 12, one part, Jim Beam. Repeal batch. There, and you should be getting some like awesome sound effects thanks to my super blue Yeti way nice microphone. Now we're going to put in the sherry cask, right? Double casket, heavy weeder. Like phew. if there was a weeder world, this guy would punch everybody right in the face. But it's weirdly sweet. Not on its own, though. It's not sweet on its own. It's exactly. weirdly un unimpressive by itself. Yeah, by itself, it is absolutely dumpster fire. Underwhelming. It's a dumpster fire that you threw all your meat from your freezer in like three weeks ago. It is just straight, like, oh, nasty. Oh. Okay, so now the next one. Is we need mouthfeels. Mouthfeels, well, we're special reserve. And if you follow me on Instagram, I'm coming up on 500 followers and I'm giving well or special reserve away, which everybody's like, yeah, I can get that. Yeah, right. If you're not in Ohio, you're not getting it at MSRP. Give me a break. And uh, so at 500, I told everybody at 500, I'm giving well or special reserve. And 1,000, I'm giving away an antique. At 1,500, I'm giving away a Blanton's. And at 2,000, I'm giving away an Eagle Rare. So go follow me on Instagram because I'm giving away I'm giving away stuff that I use for blending. Now, with the exception, with the exception of Eagle Rare, I love Eagle Rare. Can you see the volume in those glasses? It used to be. Holy for holy. <laughs> so. So oh, a Taco I'll, Bell I'll, run. <laughs> a Taco Bell run. Well, we're just pre-gaming Jason, right? The good thing is we're not talking about high proof. No. Now, does that mean that we didn't pour deep? Ah, you know what? This is, if, if Richie's doing this, guess what? So this turned into a, a solid, holes. this is a solid pour, right? But we're going to let it. We're going to marry it a little bit. We're just going to sit here and gently swirl it as we talk and we like and drink our uh, first bottle of water <laughs> and like uh, water up. Hey, I've got water glasses and I have water. I have a particular set of skills. So look at me having, if you watch my bar special, you got to have the shit. It's so much more fun when you have all your stuff. Just sitting there ready. And you can remember it the next day. I always remember the next day. If you have not, and I think everybody on here is. So mash and drum. Oh, there it is. There's Jason. I was looking for you, Jason. Perfect. No, dude. And like I said, I just want you guys to all know, I'm going to start taking this. Well, not taking. I'm going to be on this time slot. Uh, pre mash and drum, and it's always going to be Wednesday. Wednesday, we're going to go through a bunch of lackluster. Maybe we'll go through some stuff that is not lackluster. Oh, yeah. I can tell really you, I can tell you right now, I have made some blends that will make you be like, Whoa, I'm just going to buy this stuff and blend it. And uh, I mean, I have some really good blends I've done. But if you want to take a good drinker and turn it into a good cigar blend, two good things mixed together. Bingo. Yeah. And so I can blend. And that's the thing, right? I can blend towards a, a palate. I can blend towards a cigar. I literally have a stew going. And I mean literally a stew going for nothing. What's up, Jen? Glad you jumped on. It Pre-game in the mash and drip. Dusty Dan, 
I was just talking about Dusty Dan today. Oh, that's so good. That's so good. That is like straight up. I'm telling you right now, Jason, this right here, I promise you, you will put this, you will blend it, and you will do it. And you'll be like, yeah, I'm just going to throw that in another decanter, and that's going to be my cigar blend. Dusty Dan's whiskey. You know what's funny? I got, like, uh, some of my new equipment in today, and one of them lets me film in, like, old-timey stuff. And I literally instantly thought of 1972 uh, Cream of Kentucky and thought, man, if I had any more of that, I would probably do a a dusty review of my old timey footage and be like a uh, hey, current flabbity i got to see kentucky <laughs> uh, man i was sitting here like an absolute goofball by myself playing with some of my new equipment today so it's it's so nice to actually be looking at my screen and it's not like all yeah you know so you don't you know richie you bring up a really good point Blending, this blending thing is not an infinity bottle. I'm not trying to recreate an infinity bottle. Infinity bottles are, to me, are made with a thought process. Now, granted, my blending is too, but I'm not looking to let it marry for a long time. Uh, mostly because what I put in, would have put in an infinity body or what's in the mash and drums infinity bottle is good stuff. This isn't average, even average to below. You know, Jim George Dickel, 12 year, average. Jim Beam Repeal Batch, average. Ohio, below average. Cleveland Underground, below average. Weller Special Reserve, average. You know, I'm not blown away by any of them. I, I don't sit there and think, oh my God, I got to have that. I try to always buy as much Weller as I possibly can. Weller 107 is a drinker for me. I can drink 107 antique all day long. Special Reserve, I blend that shit <laughs> almost all the time. Uh, it gives a really weird thing, right? So if you haven't went over and sub Dusty Dan, oh, please do. Unbelievable guy, unbelievable person. Spends a lot of time. Uh, actually, everybody in the chat right now, I think all of us probably do sub everybody. Thanks, Jen. I appreciate it. You know, and uh, and for me, right, it's really simple. I want to try to figure out how I can bring my stewardship towards not figuring out necessarily what you like, but why do you like it? And helping you explore that, right? Because if you're new to it, been around for a while, it doesn't matter what level you are. Your palate is always advancing. Evolving. It is always evolving. You're always finding that things you didn't like before are no longer off the market. you like, oh, man, that, oh, wow, that was barrel strength. Oh, that was hot. It was gasoline. It was freaking fire. And then all of a sudden... That was cash strength. Mm -hmm. That shit's good. It tastes like caramel. And it's like, hey, caramel <laughs> and happiness and joy and happiness. Bliss. It's like, ah. and then you're like, what the heck? What? So, so you're telling me that Woodford American malt is kind of like a scotch? What? Why? Exactly. And uh, you go through, and that's the thing, right? Thanks, Cheech. It is a Scotch made in America. So it's really funny, right? So I I hope you like what I do. It, you know, I'm I'm pretty new to tubes. I'm not new to tasting. I'm not new to drinking. Um, none of that stuff's new to me. Um, my what? My wife's coming up home, so my dogs are going crazy because they think someone's going to actually do something for them. She won't. Oh, simplify. Yeah, I got really fortunate, so I got a lot of stuff done today, and uh, some of my stuff came in, and I assume, and everybody in here knows that I'm a multi-generational Marine, um, 
but I absolutely, without a doubt, spend a lot of time. Every branch of the service is very key to the U.S. success. If you've ever spent time deployed, you realize we are the best in the world of what we do because every branch supports everybody in a way that is absolutely necessary. Um, everybody's the best at what they do, but nobody does the same thing. So understand that. So as, as proud as I am is to be a Marine, I am equally parts proud of everybody that serves. And outside of wartime, let's face it, who takes more rounds than the Coast Guard? Please. Them guys get shot at all the time for drugs. So at wartime, that's different. So Dan, thank you for your service. I'm proud to be a brother both in the whiskey tubes and in the Marine Corps. I thought you would. I'm telling you, Richie Z, I knew you'd like it. So, uh, yeah, it's weird. It turns into this, like, really nice, crazy blend. And you think about what it is, and there's nothing there. I'm telling you right now, you could go out and buy something that is not this good for more than all these bottles combined. Easy. Easily. You know, you're going to go out there. What are you going to go out there? You, you, there's going to be someone out there that's like, oh, my gosh. I need to go get an old Forester single barrel of blah, 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 right? They're going to be so disappointed. And they could have literally made this and it'd be like, you know, all I can think of is Ren and Stimpy being like, happy, happy, joy. Or bottles their friends give them because they were going to pour them. Yeah. It's like, oh, you're going to get rid of that? You know what? Let me take that off your hands. I got an idea. So, yeah, Dan, if, so Dan, if you don't know what we're doing tonight is our base was George Dickel 12. We added Jim Beam repeal batch. So we did two parts Dickel, one part Jim Beam repeal batch, one part OIO, Oloroso wheat whiskey, one part Cleveland underground rye whiskey finished and black cherry wood and one part weller special reserve dan you're not a regular guy you're a damn good guy that's what you are you're just a good human yeah you know what you had to have the repeal bash because you wanted to have a finish and you wanted to have a mouthfeel, right? And that oily spread that you get from the beam, everybody says nutty, but what you have with that beam product is this coating, this heavy, thick coating. And uh, by the way, Dan, I'm not alone tonight. The voice in the background is the gunny. Er, I yell it. Uh, so you can appreciate the fact that you have uh, the retired gunny sitting in here talking tonight. But go back to the repeal batch. The repeal batch is the blend, the formula that was back in the repeal right. time. So it's an old timey formula. Back in the, in the day, eighty six was the, the the go to. So this brings that quality blend to the table. And I think that's what gives it that that coating, finishy, mellow. I mean, it does. It just like straight mellows it out, but it spreads it. You know, you think about if you go into, let's say you have a frying pan and you throw some water on it. It's hot. You throw some water on it and it kind of like zoom. Mm -hmm. It goes like this. It shoots everywhere. But you throw some oil on there and it kind of right. expresses. Well, you have to have that. If you want to finish and you cover your palate and you're trying to do some blends, you need something that has a lot of viscosity. Yeah. And the easiest way to do that is take a small pour of some of your dumpster fire. Go through, spin it around, get your rims so that you can get your legs. So when you hear viscosity, do not think people are swirling it to tell you, oh, this has this alcohol content. If they are, call um, BS. They're wrong. Yeah, it's straight BS. It has nothing to do with that. What they're looking at is the texture. Is it oily? Is it light? 
somewhere in there, if it's oily and it's got this big coating, you're going to see this, this heavy, thick legs. And they're going to make it all the way down. And they're not going to turn into shrapnel and break up and be everywhere, right? Sometimes you'll go through and swirl it and it'll come down. And when you look at it a couple of seconds later, it's just right, it's shrapnel. It's just spackling everywhere. But if you ever compare pancake syrup to molasses, molasses is thick. Yeah. Pancake syrup, it's thick, but not quite as thick as molasses. Yeah. James, there ain't no doubt about it. The, the Gunny and I, we, you know, we both have a particular set of skills, you know, we both have a particular set of skills. <laughs> so um, he has a lot of knowledge. So um, there's not a ton of people on here that's been doing this since the late 70s. He has. Um, I jumped into it more when we reconnected in the late 90s. And the late 90s, we actually got time to spend together. Um, the gunny is my brother. And there's a gauge gap. So he went to the Marine Corps when I was in kindergarten. So when we finally got to the point of getting together, um, he introduced me to things. And being the youngest, I was like, uh, yup. And uh, I just ran with it. And it ended up being like a really crucial part in a weird way of my, my actual profession. I spent a lot of time with my profession where I would get asked to, hey, you know what? We have this customer. We want to do this and this and this we want you to come out with us. And I was like, well, I don't do any of that. They happen to like bourbon and cigars. And I was like, Roger that. I was like, what's my budget? And it's like, you don't have one. I was like, oh, sweet baby Jesus. Thank you, Lord. And uh, so I was a really, I got really big. I'm not really big now, but I was really big the whole time because I had didn't have 0321s. Let me tell you, 0321, Dusty Dan, you were the dude. You were just a dude. You're a dude. But listen, you couldn't get your shit done without me. I'm just saying. The key to the key to success in battle is effective communications and proper shooting. But hey, effective communications is part of it. So Richie Z, I'm telling you right now, that is really good. I did not go into this rehearsed at all. And the gunny will tell you, I didn't go into rehearsed. I didn't try it ahead of time. I didn't do anything ahead of time. I said, here's our lineup. This is some stuff in there. The only thing that came out that was not part of the original lineup was the Weller Special Reserve. Because the Weller Special Reserve requires that it gives you this pick-me-up mouthfeel spice feel and the recon report came from 0321 yeah it, you know what 0321s are the people that give the recon reports for real like in real time so dusty dan so you know so dusty dan probably knows why i usually go by echo six whiskey right so I've had people ask me, Echo 6 Whiskey. And if you happen to look at my logo, right, you'll see that there, there's like some significant things in there. And since we have, you know, um, the people that are on here. So when you look at the logo itself, you have HQ at the bottom, which is what I call the bar headquarters. Uh, Bourbon Battalion is what we are. And on my Patreon you know, you go to Patreon, Bourbon Battalion, you'll find that there. Um, I have different levels, whether you're a fire team leader, a squad leader, platoon sergeant, gun, uh, company gunny, or sergeant major, right? You have a bunch of different levels in there. Uh, if you want to, go look at my Patreon. Um, I have I have a Patreon member. He's been great. I've reached out to him plenty of times. I have a package that's going to be going out in the next week to him. He's not on here right now. I'd give him a shout out. And um, so, you know, everything I have is towards that. Dan, the man. Yeah. So, but, you know, in that, that you go through. So I do have merch. I do have all those things that you would normally have with the Patreon. So if you go to Patreon, look at Bourbon Battalion. You can also hit me up at paypal.me 
forward slash bourbon battalion. All those areas help support um, all the equipment, all the needs, because, you know, I'm just like everybody else. I have a job and everything I have at this point, because I'm not really supported in any way, is out of pocket. Um, so for me, it's always just, but I love what I do. I love what I do. And I, I, I hope I get the support to be able to expand it and continue to, to grow in the idea that I can buy this stuff that makes it better. But at the same time, token, it, whether until I do, I'm not going to stop what I'm doing because I enjoy this. I enjoy it a lot. And uh, so when you go through, make this blend. Richie Z will tell you, the Gunny will tell you, I'll tell you. It's good stuff. Unfortunately, I have a party this Saturday, which is my wife's X amount of year party. We won't say what it is because I'll probably be on the doghouse. <laughs> so I have like a really terrible, you know, I'm in like the final countdown of what I'm doing. I don't even know if I want to do it because this is so good. I just don't know if I can stomach the idea of doing what I'm going to do this weekend because they're all like, oh, hey, you know, you need to make these drinks and this drink. And I'm like, ugh. so I'll tell you what it is, but I'm not going to do it right now because there's no way I'm blowing this blend. And hopefully as soon as we're done, either me or the gunny is going to write down this blend because it's really a good blend of stuff that we can easily get for next to nothing. And um but I have to do <laughs> Captain Morgan's Long Island Iced Tea with So this is this is the, the the birthday blend this coming week, right? And which is Saturday. Captain Morgan's Long Island iced tea. Oh, I gotta spin it around. And lemon cello. Oh, I'm pretty sure someone's gonna puke. Projectile oh, vomit. They're gonna literally go straight up and freaking projectile vomit. They're going to have a great time. They're going to have a great time. And they're going to have a good time. Now, I will say this, though. If you're looking for limoncello, these guys, Noble Cut, out of Columbus, Ohio, make some killer limoncello. It's called Noble Cut. They have a distillery. They make some bourbon. They make a lot of different things. But their limoncello is straight legit. And, uh. This stuff, well, it is what it is, right? This is just, I'm Long Island Iced Tea. Hey, I'm Women Chill. Hey, together, we are straight sickness. So, individually, we're delicious. I'm ho hopefully, hopefully, they throw up in their own car on the way leaving, not in my house. And if so, it was my wife's birthday party, not mine. She was so gracious to say, the battalion's going to have the bar open. I was like, what? What bar? Are they, and they ain't touching my story. What? If someone comes down and say, hey, can you teach me bourbon? Pfft, bar's open. You can bet your ass on that. I will, I will spend time with anybody to do that. Yeah, but if, if, if someone's like, hey, do I have regular Clyde Mayas? And Coke. <laughs> well, I mean, is that that's regular Quiet Maze, oh, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I have Quiet Maze up here. I have Quiet Maze. Put Clyde May on the rock. On the yeah. yeah. Well, Clyde I mean, you know, you're gonna rocks. get Alabama style Quiet Maze, so you're gonna get the apple note. Put on the rocks. It's amazing. Okay, Dusty Dan, what is it you want me to do with my Clyde Maze? We know it's Appley. With a caramel. That. Listen, Roop, that is a demon-possessed Arnold Palmer for sure. They are. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to put ice on that. If they don't put an iced, 
it's going to be straight chaos. Bad things are going to happen. Um, I'll pour it shallow. Oh, you know what? That sounds, you know what? Now that you said that, though, that sounds amazing. So Dan, Dusty Dan, Whiskey Rizzo, he was saying uh, mix rare breed with Clyde Mays. Ooh, it's like spiced apples. We have to do that. Yeah, we can do that right now. Whether I agree or not, we have to do well, that. We're going to do it right now. Okay. We got like a few minutes before we go to Jason. So I've got both. glass. I've got both. Where's my rare breed at? Oh, Clyde Mays is up there. You know what, um, Dan? I'm going to do that on my next blend day. Wednesday, Wednesday next week will be that. Something with Clyde Mays. Well, you know, okay, Dan. So not everybody knows this, right? So the Whiskey Crusaders this coming Monday, I'm on at 10 o'clock with them with a review. We're doing a blind tasting. Jason has the same blind tasting of different stuff that I went through and I modified. I modified this stuff through smoke. Dusty Dan had it too. And so he knows that you can change the profile vastly through it. Am I trying to be like this master smoker guy? No. Am I good at it? I'm all right. I, I, I know some things. Um, but Dan can tell you that you can do some weird stuff. If you know, and I do, how to do some like smoke infusion. Um, but you know, the same things with blends, right? Quit stopping and thinking that you have to go out and buy this pieces parts to blend. Take this shit on your bar, figure out your profile, the things you like. And try something. So try something in your bar that you don't really care for. Wow, that would taste better if it had this. What's it missing? Yeah, so add that. Oh, that's all right. But, man, if it had this, well, add that. What's, what's missing and what brings that? Yeah, add that. And just think about it, right? Trust yourself. Trust your palate. Trust what you're thinking. Believe in it. And eventually you're going to come to a really good concoction. The only thing I would tell you by the time you get there, you need to have been writing it down the whole time. Because if not, you're going to get there and be like, this is really good. <laughs> and you got to be familiar with what's I, on your bar. I don't know what I did. <laughs> I got 14 bottles. I've never tasted. How do you know what they bring? I will, Dan. I will. I've reached out to a bunch of them. I have a, I have a few things I'm doing with a couple people. So um, I have a review coming up. I will say that, you know, I did a Magnolia view. I did a Magnolia uh, bottled in Bond Rye, which is sourced out of Warrensburg, Indiana. Hint, hint. Um, that was absolutely delicious. I thought their bottled in Bond Rye was off the hook. So this coming, um, this coming, well, actually tomorrow, I'm going to go through and do Magnolia's Weeded Bourbon. This is their weeder expression. I think their logos are flipping gorgeous. They're very old timer. This is uh, uh, taken from an 1849 rectifier that used to be out of Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, uh, went through and did it. Um, Ed, the guy that owns magnolia is passionate about what he does he does a great job with it he makes sure they do due diligence with it and so i look forward to doing this weeder um i'll put up a recon report uh probably tomorrow or friday it might take me tomorrow to do it to post it friday um i'll get that up uh but their rye their rye bottled and bond is is really really good uh go check out my uh report on it so I'm excited about doing the weeder. It's very nostalgic. Like a step back in time. Man, I'll tell you what, it was good. It's like a step back in time. 
you did. You know, and I don't know if you step back in time based on just the profile of it, but the label took you mm-hmm. back. I mean, when you looked at it, you felt like mm-hmm. you were old timey. And uh, and if you're into old timey, Dusty Dan, for sure. <laughs> um, you're welcome, Roop. I'll catch you all over there on uh, the mash and drum. So we got like five minutes. I'm going to push the envelope because we know it at nine o'clock. He's going to have his countdown. So I have like a solid four and a half minutes plus his countdown. So so hopefully you learned a little bit about going through and spending some time blending on your bar. Um, understanding that some of those things that you don't really care for, start with the one of the group that you have that you care for the most. Put that as your base. Once you do your base, then start just doing a one part ad to each one of them to figure out how do you get to that and once you do you'll find your perfect blend that you can just want to be on there oh you're welcome Rube. thanks richie z um hopefully you guys spread the news spread the word um i tr- i i'm not trying to be anybody i'm just trying to go through and figure out how do we do stuff on our bar that matters to us? And uh, my recon reports are usually very, very thorough. I try to go the extra step. I always make sure that there's a second pour. I also make sure that we do a second smelling and tasting of the first pour. And somewhere along the line that, you know, you ha- you have to do the due diligence these people, whether you like it or not, have spent the time and taken the effort to make you what they believe is a good product. Give it the due diligence to figure out whether it is, whether it's something you like or not. It does not come from the very first one. Thanks, Cheech. I appreciate it. Whiskey Encore. If you haven't went over to Whiskey Encore, uh, go over and find him, sub him, along with Everybody in the chat tonight, everybody here is a great supporter of the whiskey community. Um, I value everybody in the chat. Um, new subs, people I've talked to for a long time. I appreciate it. Uh, we're at like, I'll go one more minute and then we'll finish. Thanks, Daniel. I appreciate it. It's a lot better live now that you have new equipment, right? So I'm not like buffering and sitting here like, am I talking? Am I not talking? And hey, Richie Z, am I talking? (laughs) And so Richie Z has been here since day one. And I appreciate everything that Richie brings to the table. I look forward to spending a lot more time with you guys. I'm usually out there tinkering around on everybody's channels. Hit me up on Instagram. I have live feeds on Instagram that I jump on all the time. And uh, I appreciate the gunning. The gunning. The gunny jump jumped in tonight uh, unexpectedly. I totally ambushed him. He came in. He's like, hey, what's up? And I was like, guess what? Hey, yo. Devil dog. Yeah, freaking devil dog. Dusty Dan. And uh, But, yeah, he came down. And uh, when he came in, he's like, uh, what's up tonight? I was like, hey, we're going to do a live feed. And he's like, what? And I was like, ah, you can stay over there. You're kind of like uh, Charlie, right? Charlie from Charlie's Angels. Uh, you, hey, Bosco. You, no, Bosco was in front of the camera. Charlie was the guy behind it. He was just the speaker. And so that's all it was. So, all right, we're in the, the, the final seconds. So I appreciate you all. Thank you for joining in. Every Wednesday at 7.30, I will do this. I will do a different Wednesday, Wednesday. Every Tuesday, I will do a regular live feed. And I plan on trying to have at least two regular reviews that I will post out there. I'm at PayPal me, paypal.me forward slash bourbon battalion. I'm also at Patreon at bourbon battalion. Anything you do to help us um, goes towards the bar. Everything goes towards procuring equipment, whiskey, bar elements, and all that stuff to make it better because all this stuff is that. Cheers to the gunny. Thank you for joining us tonight. Um, I look forward to seeing you guys all, and I'll check you all out on Mash and Drum. Till then, be good to each other.
be good to all those people that support you and make sure you're taking the effort to support people that you love. Cheers, and I'll talk to you guys soon.